Hey guys, welcome back to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Anyone who knows me knows that I love sauerkraut. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a different video today. We are actually gonna pick these cabbages and we are gonna make some homemade sauerkraut. So before we get started, as always, please go down below and find the subscribe button along with the little bell. Click both of those so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is one of my all-time favorite summertime foods. I grew up in the city, like Philadelphia, the city, and sauerkraut came in a can or in the refrigerated section. Never in my wildest dreams as a kid what I have thought that you could make your own sauerkraut and it's super easy so today I'm going to show you how to do this and make this process part of your normal life now whether you buy your cabbage in the store or you pick your cabbage from your garden either of these um, types of produce will work so I planted these cabbages around the third and fourth of April they were early cabbages, ready to harvest in about 45 days. I planted six of them. I only have one that did not make it. It was eaten by aphids. But this variety has been wonderful. I cannot believe how quickly they grew once it started getting warm. So today I'm going to actually cut this middle one right here and take it out. And I have a head also in the refrigerator right now. I am going to do this and use these for my sauerkraut. So it's really important here in Oklahoma to make sure that you have a net to cover your cabbage because of cabbage worms. Earlier I said aphids, but I really meant cabbage worms. Um, they will destroy an entire cabbage crop. So it's really super important to keep the net on there. Here I'm just pulling out the one I need and it's such a perfect size. So to get it started, we need four cups of water, a tablespoon of salt, and we're going to make a brine. A brine is actually just salt and water. I'm going to heat it up on the stove so that I can melt all the salt, but in order to pour it into your sauerkraut, you have to have it at room temperature or cold. After the salt dissolves, I'll stick it in a refrigerator. Fermenting is really awesome and easy and so good for you. I got this fermentation kit on Amazon. It comes with the cap, which has the air release, and also the weights. You can also use the outer leaves of your cabbage in place of the weight. I'll explain that in a little bit. But if you don't have either of those, you can even just use a Ziploc bag full of heavy rocks. All three of these are acceptable. So these are my three cabbages. The one with the large leaves is mine from the garden. This here is also from the garden. This is the one that was attacked by cabbage worms. And then I have one that I bought at the store. I will use all three of these in my sauerkraut today. So I'm going to take the large leaves off the cabbage that came from the garden and I can use these inside my jar or my chickens will really enjoy it. So what we need to do to all three cabbages is to shred them. You could chop them in a food processor, but I'm really picky about my sauerkraut. I really like it long and stringy. So I just slice it so that they are the shredded type of sauerkraut. So I've only done the one head of lettuce and it's already almost filled up my bowl. This is the one from my garden. So I finished slicing them up and I had to use two bowls. I'm just taking a tablespoon of salt and putting it on top of 
both bowls and I'm going to massage the cabbage. What it does is it actually helps to pull the water out of the cabbage, making it juicier when it starts to ferment in the jars. And you can see the difference. This one is still dry. And this one here I've been massaging for a couple minutes and you can already see the water on my hands and that's just from the salt and the cabbage being mixed together. Once I massaged both bowls, they actually could combine into one bowl. So here is the stuff for my chickens. They will totally love that. And I'm going to take this cabbage and put it into these jars. These are half gallon jars. And I'm going to stuff it. I got this really cool filling piece from a friend of mine up in upstate New York. It really helps when you're pouring a lot of stuff into a jar to keep it from spilling all over. If you don't have one of these, I'm going to warn you, this part of the job is very messy. So just continue to stuff and stuff and push down and stuff. It really needs to be compacted in there so that it can all stay under the water. So I'm finished stuffing it into this jar, and I have a little bit left, I'll put it in a smaller jar. So our next step involves the brine. I just pulled this out of the refrigerator so it's nice and cool. And I'm going to actually use a ladle to pour what little brine I need into this jar. You want the cabbage to be totally submerged in the water. It needs to stay below the water line. That is why we use the weight or the cabbage leaf or the rocks. I'll put the rest aside for right now. So now's the time to grab your weight, your cabbage leaf, or your rocks. You're going to stick your weight on top, pushing it until it's totally submerged in water. If you're using cabbage leaves, just fold them until you can continue to push them down on top and the cabbage is actually below the water line. You can see here the weight is below the water and the cabbage is way below the water. The whole point is to make sure that your cabbage stays submerged throughout this fermentation process. You're going to want to get your fermentation lid or just a regular mason jar lid or even a cheesecloth with a rubber band. You do not want your ring to be tight 
because it needs to have a way for gases to escape and water also. You want to make sure you label it. Put a start date and then count seven to eight days or more according to how much sour you want and write that on a label so that you can put it on your jar. Put your jar inside of some type of water collecting vessel because this will spill out all over the place. Make sure you put your label on your jar. Whatever brine you have left, you can put it in another jar and put it in the refrigerator. It'll last like six months to a year in there. And then wait. And wait. And wait. Waiting is the hard part, but in about a week, this is going to be amazing. Now in five to 10 days, when this sauerkraut is done, we're gonna actually can it and save it for later in the year so that I don't actually have to eat this all right this minute. It's super simple and I'm gonna teach you how. Just join us next week when we do that. So we'll see you next time, guys. There's that beautiful sauerkraut. See ya.